okay. <laughs> So let's continue, please. sound and um, with images. So you know low, low and uh, high pass filters, they are working with uh, sound as well. So you know, hopefully you know it from high and low tuning and so on. So that's the beauty of it. Huh? So uh, what we are doing, or what I showed you with images, and unfortunately, we, have, we don't have enough time in, in our lecture. I, my intention was to have the same with sound, but I think we don't have time. So with sound, it's the same as with images. So you take things from time domain. This is what you can measure with your photo or with a microphone. That's time domain. So these are imprints and so on. You take so this, and you put it to a list of numbers. This is what you measure. Take Fourier, and you have the frequencies. <coughs> so there is no difference whether you have frequencies of numbers originated in images or in movies, or originated in audio. You simply have numbers. <coughs> so put it to frequency domain. Tune a little around with your filters, kill a little or improve a little uh, frequencies or like we had it with the colors, so you have certain densities and so on, you can adjust all the frequencies, so play with, with the picture and, and time domain. And then you can inverse Fourier it again to, uh, to, uh, to frequency, uh, to time domain, from frequency to, to time domain. So it doesn't matter if you take an image to, uh, to frequency domain and change a little and get it back to, uh, to an image. Or if you take an audio uh, frequency audio or image frequency <coughs> uh, audio or audio frequency image. It simply doesn't matter. There's always a kind of folding, unfolding of things, getting it from one side to the other, changing characteristics and going back. And as we had uh, last time in, uh, with the colors, we have RGB to manipulate the color, the single color in, uh, in uh, time domain. We have RGB, so it's a physical orthogonal space, Cartesian coordinates in RGB. Or if you are in uh, hue, this is uh, the color tone, which is circular, saturation and brightness. So this is frequency, because it's rotation, really. So we have two color schemes, uh, color, uh, 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 schemes the same like, um, and it's always the same, like our two uh, sides, waves, particles. So they simply transfer it, crisscross, whatever you like. And if you want to have a um, uh, sensible, uh, so if you want to, to tune the sensitivity of things, you're with the wave. So you need the frequency of it, or you need the hue color scheme. Then it's about, uh, about the, the uh, <coughs> color tone, it's about uh, saturation or brightness. If you want to change the expansion of things, then you need RGB. You need the particles system. And you simply change it. So then it's more the physicality of things in RGB, or in, uh, <coughs> in time domain, the sensibility of things is on, in, on the image side. And then you tune the sensible things. <laughs> so it's the intellectual part, it's the sensible part. And you always need both. And you can transfer these things, crisscross. And it's all the same 
in all media. That's the beauty of it. If you get this point, you're done. Oh, I don't have to tell you anymore. <laughs> this one. In principle, I want to tell you. So. <clears throat> So we had that here, it's just a, a little encyclopedic, so how to make these pictures, black and white, grayscale, we, we did it already. So it's not this uh, gradient and blending, this is, but I think we had it make these kind of things <clears throat> and so on. You can look it up, it's a little encyclopedic how I, I put it to you, gave it to you. Read the color. So this is what we did uh, last time, create an image in 3D. So this is 2D, and if you put it, then you get a 3D thing. This is all the same structure from data. Render that, not as, a, this is a little rough. This is called voxel instead of pixel. And if you want to have sharp renderings, make your voxels as graphic elements. So the, uh, the logic is the same, just another rendering for the same thing. Uh, we had the cellular automata. So we had these machines. See, nice, nice renderings. Color cube said it, a composition of images. You can add, for example, this is a line row here, here, and you simply can add these images divided by two and you get uh, this blending. Yeah. Image this plus this by two. You can make arithmetic within images. This is what I told you with the color schemes and Grassmann, that uh, the schemes and, uh, are developed like that, that you can make arithmetics on, uh, on these things and you have a proper visual uh, uh, effect. So it's a kind of tuning yeah, on the visual thing. So Grassmann did the same like Pythagoras with the tuning of the instrument. So I thought Pythagoras made the tuning of the space, and this is how to get things harmonic with your ear. And Grassmann did the same with colors. So it's a tuning of colors in time. <coughs> the tuning of, of elements in time by color. And by that you can make the visual thing uh, accessible to arithmetics in time. So, and now you can make <coughs> um, adding not only these blendings, these simple things, but the same with, with pictures. So take this one, like in Photoshop with different layers. Very simple, another is a random one overlay them simply by image one plus image two by two. So the logic here is the same like these simple examples here. And you can make it with high quality, super sophisticated pictures, simply add one with another divided by two and that's fine. So it's like Photoshop. Combinatoric things here, masking, so. Look it up, it's not complicated. And it's arithmetics. So the formula is <clears throat> to make this, you have a black and white as a mask, you have an image, this is a dog of uh, Richter, and the formula to get this one here is, here, L1 multiplied by the mask and inverted by saying one minus, and then you have this result. <coughs> One minus the multiplication of the mask with the image gets this. So if you multiply the image with the inverse of the mask, one minus is the inverse, and make that inverse, then you have uh, the other mask. It's arithmetics. So you can do these examples, of course, in Photoshop. <laughs> The beauty now is, if you make that in an arithmetic, you can write a program and can have thousands of diverse uh, calculations on images, depending, and so on. So, because it's not lazy. So, Photoshop is lazy. So, because you have to do it. 
So if you understand that, thousands of iterations on, on, on manipulating images, which is necessary if you want to go to big data, 10,000 of pictures and so on, and want to somehow work. There's no way to do it with Photoshop. Yeah. These are things. <clears throat> so this is very. So I think you already know you can have this kind of uh, editor on pictures, and you can make uh, manipulations there, get coordinates with RGB and so on. Play a little around. It's a mini Photoshop, what you can do here. Blur, apply, and then you get certain effects on the picture itself without code. So, image resize, very simple uh, uh, things. We have uh, Betty in a certain size. Now we resize it. This is. Uh, Betty is 1000 by 1300, resize it to 24, and then resize, uh, make it 10 times bigger, which means we uh, have <coughs> uh, 10 by 10, 100 pixel per color now. If I make that, for example, 48, and I get another resolution, and I have, uh, yeah. Simple things. Resize. Color convert, we had that. Color parts. For example, take this picture here, it's an image. We go to the dimensions, this image is 670 by 500 pixels. Now we make a table of numbers. So in this case, we go from <coughs> PL is uh, N, N plus 120, it's from 60 to 553 in steps of 30, which makes, so we have then, first step is 60, 60 plus 120, so it's 60, 180, then add 30 on both things, 90 to uh, 210, always add 30 to the end. So if you have that, take a an image uh, <clears throat> from line 0 to 120 and this in, uh, in, in Y. So this is always a little bad. In uh, images, it's, this is uh, Y and this is X. It's the other way around. So now you get, if you evaluate that, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. And this is a row here. You always get 120 by 120 in steps of 30 to the end. You get this nice um, parts of a picture. You can make picture blending. So you take, <clears throat> you have a picture here, image one, image two, image three. You get a table, O one, you, you partition uh, o, the interval between O and one between in, in five uh, um, intervals, and then you say these five intervals should be blended between image one, image two, and image three, and then we blend these things according to this ratio. So, which means because, again, this is a pure function, so we start with zero, so we go with the first, then we go uh, image one between image two, one and image two, because we have one-fifth, so if this is one, uh, zero, and this is one, then we are little of image two, then we have 40%, uh, 60%, 80%, 100%. And you see how these pictures blend. We can do <coughs> Uh, 12, and then we get a blending of 12. So, or we can change 
image two, image one, we get this. So we can add another image one, we get this. Very comfortable. This is how to make a 3D picture image, for example. We can image take as we had it uh, above. We take some 30 of these, of these things and simply pack it in a volume. Yeah, there's a movie in a cube. We can, for example, we can make a movie like that as well. No? So it's uh, <coughs> uh, I3D, so list, an, list animate, uh, I3D. Movie, huh? You simply need to get the idea how these things fit and how they work. <clears throat> so, go a little... If we are on videos, this is what a lot of you are interested in. How to import a video. <clears throat> so I made a step by step. This is a little tricky. So this is a YouTube video and I'm using Firefox and uh, video download helper. Install it as a, <clears throat> as an, uh, a small uh, uh, application within Firefox. Then you are on uh, on a YouTube page, for example, then here you get a menu. What you can, what can be downloaded in different formats. Say download and convert. Convert it to that's important to QuickTime um, movie on OS X. I don't know what is uh, appropriate in uh, Windows or Linux. So, if you have that. I gave you this this movie. <coughs> it's uh, it's here in in your source sources uh, movies, and this is uh, the, the it's a uh, trailer from Blade Runner. <coughs> Again, it's always the same thing. System style uh, dialog file open. Now you got uh, this file name. <coughs> um, import this file name gives you the frame numbers. So, and this four minutes of a trailer has uh, 6,000 images, and this is of uh, HD resolution, and this is about 18 gigabytes of data, uncompressed, raw data. So you can't work with it. And therefore they don't import the movies, but give you the number of frames. So, and this is frame number 1000. This is frame number 600. Yeah? So, simple. Import movie frame. You can have multiple frames. Take 600 and 620. And then here's two. So it's not moving, boring. Ah, not something else. Now this is a single image. You can do whatever you, whatever we did with images, change it and uh, uh, save it as a, as a JPEG. So this, for example, just to give you an idea, this is <coughs> uh, four frames. I start with frame number one, 1000. I have a distance of 12 and I import 1000, 1012, 24, uh, <clears throat> 36. So I make an overlay, I add all these things and uh, divide it by 4. 
Then I, this is a little ugly here, I make a graphics black to uh, cover this logo. Done, and I uh, made a red text in the center with a frame number. So this is working pretty fast. So like this, we can make another one, 800. So we have it here. Um, this is wrong with the frame number. Okay. <clears throat> Ah, yeah. 800. Yeah. So then save it. This is how video export a single frame. It's again, it's very simple. Go to a certain directory. Go to desktop. Uh, make a new folder. First movie. Go there, choose it, so, <clears throat> uh, and then <clears throat> this is our composition, and this, export that, now we have BRC 900 JPEG, go here, desktop, first movie, BRC 800. Good quality. Everything is fine. So now do that a hundred times. So the whole th the whole story, but do it a hundred times. Make it a little faster. Just uh, forty times. Uh, and here now you see he's rendering all the frames. So it takes a night and then you can make a whole movie different. So here, now it's done. I take QuickTime uh, Pro and uh, they have <coughs> uh, image sequence, open that, go to our file and then select that, open that and uh, say yes, 24 frames per second, go here and there will be. Save it, distribute it, the file. Yeah? Just to give you an idea how it works. <coughs> On videos. <coughs> give you a shot. Random images, again with uh, Gerhard Richter. This is a random color, we had that. Random image here, so it's super nice. You go uh, random reel, 24 by 24 by three in color, then you get an image like that and resize it to a certain resolution. It's one to three and uh, 1920, resampling nearest, and then you get it uh, uh, up save it to our desktop picture one save it go to desktop picture one show it nice yeah <laughs> one line <laughs> next just to give you that you start to like it. <laughs>
Same code, just other parameters. <clears throat> so 120 by 1, or we can have uh, 180 by 1 by 3. Render it, export it. Piece <clears throat> uh, 2. Save P2. Okay, no? <clears throat> With the color profile. So instead of uh, getting random numbers, you simply get a random select on pixels of a certain uh, of a certain picture. So you have a certain spectrum, and this has the same distribution of colors in a certain pattern like uh, the original picture. If you want to control that, so, nice examples. You can play around with it. Uh, Corbusier, these are the <coughs> uh, things I always do here. All, every time I'm uh, changing the picture, uh, the, uh, the screen, this is changing. This is done like this. I took an image from Corbusier color scheme from Im internet. So then I extracted the colors. So I made an algorithm which just had the pipette and takes the color of this in a certain grid. So these are the colors, I like it. So then I wrote these kind of proportions. These are proportion in X and these are proportions in Y. And then the pro production is <clears throat> like this. So I say in X I want to have 12 and Y I want to have 4. I make random <clears throat> random lists between O and 1 and they expand it with rectangles to this function. Oops, now we have to make that. So, and every time I'm doing it now I get another color scheme of Corbusier. And I can change it um, like this. And it's okay. <laughs> Turn that, and uh, it's another color scheme. Make it to 120 if you like. Forty-two. It's still the proportions of <laughs> Corbusier rotated, and you have this kind of pattern. And again, yeah, it's, it's important to understand that doing this is abstracting from any medium. So if you're able to manipulate the pictures, you can manipulate uh, uh, audio, you can manipulate <coughs> uh, 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 movies, 3D graphics, and, and so on. It's always the same language. You can go to biology and manipulate uh, uh, molecules of proteins. It's always the same language. chromosomes, whatever. Right? You can read that how they are doing it, because it's the same, but rendered differently. Yeah, that's why I think it's worth to get literate. <laughs> Not to learn Photoshop. <laughs> because then you have to learn a CAD system, and then you have to learn these and that, and you can't stop learning. And then you have new versions, you have to learn again, and then you have to one. It's a kind of nonsense if you don't want to be a professional in a very specific field. So, this is our Corbusier. <coughs> um, these are, uh, I like this very, uh, very much uh, as an effect. And again, with, um, with the, there's an image effect, <coughs> again with, with particles and waves. So I, it's a picture of Gerhard Richter again. I'm uh, loading the, the image and the image data. Look for the dimensions. All this is so I get the mean value of uh, <coughs> of the image, and this is a green. So of, of course, yeah. If you look at the image, and this is a value. Now I partition this image. 
I cut it in pieces. Then I have this stuff. Let's look how to, that I'm doing it. Yes, we did it with a 3D block of, uh, of, of partitioning. So now I'm taking, oops. So what is this? Then I'm cutting it. This, these are uh, certain parts of the picture. I'm getting mean value for each of these parts. So I'm looking for the mean color of this, the mean color of this, and then these are the colors. And now I'm getting a color field corresponding to my picture. So and if I aggregate that, I get a nice patterned picture with very few pixels in, uh, in, in, in graphics. If I expand that, you get these kind of uh, results. <coughs> but somehow it's corrupted. Get it uh, again. Now it's good again. Here we partition it, we go to the several parts. This is a color field. Make rectangles with the color, this is a color field. Make rectangles with them. Aggregate the, the rectangles. <coughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm missing this graphics 250 sticks. I have to deliver, so simply graphics instead of graphics uh, 250 sticks. I'm missing, so making that, for example, more expanded. Export it as a PDF. And then uh, you get a, a nice uh, PDF result, with, uh, which is zoomable and so on. So make it, again, system. Dialog input of uh, um, file save result. Go to desktop P3 PDF, and we are here with the PDF. And we have very nice, precise graphics in this color. You can make any kind of, of parameters for that and, and doing that. That's this example. So this is on particle. And this is the same thing with <coughs> Fourier. So I take the, the, the pixels, I flatten the whole line of, uh, of, of graphics into one line. I make Fourier on, the, on, on one line of numbers, like on sound. I make a low pass filter and I pack it back. And then you get uh, these nice uh, artifacts. Again here, save it, p3.pdf. A place. So this is with wave. So this is JPEG compression in principle, and the other thing was uh, GIF compression. And in both cases, you really can play around and get beautiful results. <clears throat> That's this. Some more. 
yeah, you can go in if you like. It's more you can. <laughs> what I'm doing here is loading images from internet. Of you simply say uh, Palladio, or you say Aldo Rossi, or Le Corbusier, and then the machine taking uh, pictures from internet from Palladio, the f all the pictures you have. Or if you say six, he takes six buildings and six portraits of him. And then he's combining these uh, disks, the portrait, the, uh, the building, and the name. Yeah? <laughs> That's the code to do that. And you can do it with all the architects. <laughs> and then overnight, you can have 100, uh, 100 famous uh, uh, architect you like. Make it overnight, and you have all the disk for your architects with all their buildings and so on. <coughs> so that's the architect's disk. <coughs> okay. So this is a kind of um, things you can do, and then we are, we are finished. Uh, with Mathematica, it's uh, defined and pre even if this is not a lot to program, but you have to know that, you, so you can image combine, for example, here. And uh, <coughs> you have two images. You know these, um, these camera, I don't know how it works, it's how it, with the Fresnel lens and the top, and then you, can uh, focus later. So you may take, take uh, 20 or 32 different uh, uh, photos in different focus and uh, you can focus later or have the whole range of the picture and all the uh, distances uh, sharp because you're making a lot of different um, uh, pictures in sync. And this is the uh, the yeah, given algorithm. So you have now the focus is in front, focus is in the center, and uh, by image focus combined, you simply get always the sharpest region of the image. You can combine a, a focus. So tone enhancement, we had, we had these kind of things. So we have this ugly picture, <laughs> but you can make this out of it. <laughs> Exposure combine. You make different uh, exposures, image multiply up, up and down and so on. You're playing around with the color uh, chromaticity, playing around, spreading the picture somehow, and then you combine it to get contrast. Perspective distortion. Here, this is Notre Dame. No, Notre Dame at this. Um, Okay, now we have this, this is Notre Dame. Um, <clears throat> X and Y, we get uh, certain points, locator plane. Something's wrong. Ah, here. And then you can put that. And you have to play a little around. So I, I forgot how to how to do it. And then you can uh, make the uh, uh, can work with the distortion of a of a picture. And then you can get it. Equal. So image stitching is there. So if you have multiple, you can make one out of multiple. You can get key points, points of interest in a picture. You can find matching points. You have two points, two pictures, and these are always the same points. And you can find the same points in different pictures. By that, you can make the stitching automatically. Here you can 
uh, image uh, displacements. These are pictures about what changed in the sequence of pictures. There's a kind of heat map of movement in pictures. This is what you what you use for uh, for this uh, catastrophe you see with the earthquake, where are <coughs> you have satellite pictures, and uh, then you use these algorithms, for example, to see which uh, buildings or region have been, uh, has been uh, uh, crashed by earthquakes. <coughs> Here, I don't know. Do you have a crazy picture like that, and you can get it sharp? Yeah? So you simply say there is a certain kind of uh, reflection and, and, and so on. It's of a certain systematicity. And then you imitate the systematicity of refractions and, and uh, <laughs> these things. And you calculate it back. And by that you get, or that, that you uh, move the camera in a certain direction. So you can find the movement of the camera. And by that you can calculate it back to sharpen the picture. Of course. Here, this is very, very nice. In paint, <laughs> you simply say, this is my picture, this is a mask, and I don't want to have the white regions, and then he's filling the rest. Good, very useful. Similarities. You have a lot of pictures, you have one picture, and you ask, what is the most similar picture to this one? And then you get one out of these, which is most similar to that. Yeah. Face detection. <laughs> Character recognition. Image identifier is very interesting as well. So you get a picture. Do it with architecture. For example, with our <clears throat> so, and then ask for what is it? Okay, yeah, a key lime, citrus tree, fruit tree, flowering tea tree, wooden plant. So now we can go with uh, with these guys. Ask what is it? Person, homemade, primate, mammal. <laughs> go, go with Kovizi. Uh, where, where was he? Um, oh, it's Notre Dame. Rosette, Coppola, and then so on. Lancet, Winnie, Fly, Bartlett, Kate. Not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. Yeah? <laughs> so, that's this. <coughs> um, now, you can import pictures, you can manipulate, work with pictures, and then you can <coughs> export it to other formats. So it's like Fourier, going from pictures to graphic, graphics to pictures, pictures to sound, pop up, and so crisscross to text. Text to picture, picture to text, text to other, and so on. This is always like the media. So you're juggling around and transferring one to the other and doing things you want to, to have. So, because a media is always staging a certain thing and you can get certain contrast on a specific way of, uh, of, of thinking. So if you visualize a sound, you can manipulate the sound and understand the sound in a different way as if you hear it. So if you make a computer graphics out of it, it's another way. It's like translating to another language in this media. And therefore, it's important, for example, that you can make an image contour, which makes an image to a graphics. So on this, for example, is a satellite picture. You can make a binarized, deletes the small components, deletes the noise. And then you say mesh, and you can measure the area. You have the nice graphics of the things. So this is the inverse function to this image function on graphics. So this is a graphics function on images. So I told you at the beginning, image is on the wave side, graphics is on the particle side, and you can translate.
can get the lines, <coughs> and so on. A lot of other stuff, I didn't finish it. So that's uh, it for today. With the exams, that's, uh, I don't believe anymore that we can do it uh, automatically. <laughs> with, the, uh, with the computer, there's too much uh, noise and, and cheating and, and complication and so on. I don't think it's an easy way to do it with computers. So therefore, <clears throat> next week it will be, I will make a, a, a round make again. We simply will, uh, <coughs> will uh, provide papers and you have to fill it by with pencil. <laughs> you have to close your computer. <laughs> you simply have to learn. <laughs> so I want that you learn these questions and uh, so it's uh, and we want to get out of uh, these technical complications. So it's getting difficult and it's not fair with the others who didn't do that and so on, therefore make it very clean, uh, so we have to make it, by, uh, we have to go by, by hand through all these things, a little more work, but I think it's fair and uh, it's uh, simple and clean. We distribute uh, questions, they will be randomized, so each paper will be different. <coughs> you sign it, we collect them, no computer, no book, no other paper, and this is controllable, and that's fair, and this is how it should work like at the end of next week. So I think we can, we will have, uh, not eight, we will have uh, 16 questions <coughs> next week, or 15 questions, 15 minutes, and that's it. Yeah? So then we will start counting these exams. If somebody is not here, we make an extra uh, uh, slot uh, the week after, for people not having, uh, not being able to be here and uh, to make this uh, exam. So that's the procedure. We hazard too much a lot. So <laughs> it's too complicated. Yeah. This will be. I will write an A so there's no misunderstanding. This is how we want to. Uh, do. I want you to uh, really somehow get used to these crazy concepts, to this kind of uh, thinking and skeleton and so on, and this needs exercise and you need to do it every every week, and therefore we need these crazy uh, multiple choice. I think to make sure that you somehow get used to The same again with the question, I think it's, uh, what you should do is, <coughs> you should, uh, uh, the questions are, you should say they are always, uh, they are moving in this direction, you should start to, to question these symmetries and these, these things. So, for example, if the image is on the same side as then the human <laughs> and uh, the real, so then ask the image against ratio. Or, yeah? Or ask it against intelligence. What is the, what's the proportion of oh, the, the, the game? Put image and intelligence on stage. And Look what they have to talk. They take get their science from these symmetries and talk and make combinations with it, make gymnastics with these concepts. And look that you find nice talks on stage with interesting combinations of these things. So make that freestyle or make that to address a certain question you have. Or if you have a certain picture you want to analyze or you're interested in a certain piece of architecture or some, uh, <coughs> some readings with, uh, with theory or with architecture, take the concepts and try to put it, to position it in this uh, skeleton and play around. Yeah? And what would you do for the questions with numbers or codes? What's your advice? Uh, with questions with numbers or What's your advice? How should we learn these kind of questions? Simply, either you understand the symmetries of that. There's always it's like Rubik's, Rubik's cube, huh? Cube. But these are the exam questions, huh? Not the questions you have. So the exam it's always like Rubik's cube. So again, it's a combinatoric question. You don't need to learn the code. You simply have to find what are the differences, and then with combinatorics you can find the solution in these uh, in these questions with with uh, the coded questions. So then it's a, so, 
and by that you can either you can understand that and then you are able to read that or you learn it by heart. The shortcut, I don't want to force you to do these things, but the shortcut is that you get somehow used to it and simply learn it by heart. <laughs> like a driver's license. So this is a shortcut. So I don't want to force you to do things. But, but of course, <laughs> it's simpler simply to try to understand how this is working and then it's all the same and you're fast. Faster at the end. So we're learning at the beginning is a little more complicated, but at the end it's simple because it's always the same. Can you give us a little bit more transparency, like how much questions we have to be correct to pass the course? That's, this depends on the problem now is, for example, with the things I got from you. This is unbelievable work. <laughs> 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 so something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you are pioneering all this stuff, so I don't want to make trouble with that. I think you want to have you learning this kind of, so get used to this kind of thinking, which I think uh, is adequate for you as architects in, in our time with computer. So, <clears throat> We will have experience how this develops, and this is a statistical thing at the end. Next year, I have this experience, and your colleagues from next year will be, I can say at the beginning, it will be like that. Now I, I don't want to make a problem. So, but on the other hand, if you are with the weak 10%, then it depends on what is the <laughs> policy, what to do with it. So if we have if you have a lot of very good students and, and there are some who obviously don't want to do or uh, don't know that, then it's a question of honor not to, to let that go. But it's yeah, it's a statistical thing how this works, like every always and I have no not the corpus, so I don't know how complicated these questions are for you. Yeah? Are you able to learn <laughs> by heart, or are you in the majority of you willing to learn that? I don't know. So we will see that. So we have to make this kind of experience, and then uh, we, we, I think next year, and, and next semester, then after that, we will have some regulation. We can be sharp on that. Not yet. I would be very unfair if I say you have to learn, if, if from, at the end, from 36 uh, questions, you have to make uh, 30 right. This would be might be very easy or super complicated for everyone, but I don't want to make it. I don't want to make trouble with it. But I need some uh, some sweetness. Uh, maybe could you could not set the question amount to fifteen because when when you, when I need to learn the code, uh, read the code many times to process all this stuff, and one minute per question is I don't know, but I think it's not. Yeah, maybe it's because of cheating last time. <laughs> and you want to be incredibly fast and correct. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, we will, we will check that. So, on the other hand, these questions are all known. So, in principle, you have to, to look a little and then try to make it a little bit harder. I don't know the questions of the code it's, it's because you can't remember them all, and then you have to think and so the idea is that with all this stuff, this is with, with exercises in reading and writing in primary school. So the idea is that you simply have to do it every day, in principle. So then you get used to it. <coughs> it's not a question that you are, so you have to get used to these kind of, of thing and thinking. And this means exercises in principle every day. And it's learning like, like in primary school, it's a meditation on these things. And then it works, the same with the code. So you don't have to, have, so the idea is, in my experience with uh, postgrad uh, students of oh, a long time is that if you're doing it in principle, yeah, it's very, 15 minutes a day, then you get used to it. And then you can be very natural after, after, after a year. But it takes a year. So this is what I recommend to do. Learning it by heart, strictly, and then in short term will be complicated. But we will see. Yeah.
But it's like learning why to make an A and a B to in writing. Or what is 3 plus 2 is 5, they're right. No reason, it didn't need to do it. And then somewhere it works. <coughs> These kind of exercises, like in your in primary school, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 4 is 7, 3 plus 5 is 8. <laughs> again and again and again. Fun way to have it. Interesting. There's no reason for that, but it's working and it's powerful. Like you can get into a calculator to read and to write and make oh. The discourse. <laughs> and it, we, we did it for eight years now with postgrads <coughs> and uh, in freestyle, so without, uh, without uh, uh, this support, without these explicit explanations, other than lectures and so on, and it should work with, uh, with, with this setup. Good. I think it's not fair if I, 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 I can do it. So of course I have the list and then, but I think it's 50% is not okay. <laughs> and this is not working. So, and if we can't manage math next time, then we have to make this, uh, <coughs> this final shape uh, full form like the others and forget the whole uh, exercises uh, during this semester and next semester we have to make it uh, better. So these are, yeah, but it's complicated. So if, if I make a clear and precise schedule of all these things works, I'm not adaptable. So you really, we both would be very frustrated. So now I'm able to navigate all aspects and we learn how this works. And then, yeah, it will. Unfortunate is that, for example, the exams, it, I had wrong assumptions. 